Welcome back to another camera channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about teleprompters. If you're a solo creator or if you work in a production team, you know the importance of a teleprompter. If you don't know what a teleprompter is, it's basically a way of displaying a script to someone who's on camera in a way that they can read it while looking straight down the lens. And ironically, in this video, I'm not using a teleprompter or a script, so there's going to be lots and lots of mistakes. If you search for teleprompters on Amazon, you're going to find a few different types of basic teleprompters. So you can have a small one like this, which is very, very cheap and very small. And then you're going to have these other kind of mid-sized ones, which look like this. Now, the technology is basically the same. It uses a two-way mirror in a way where you can reflect something like a screen, and these are built for like iPads and iPhones and things like that, and small screens, and you reflect your script this way while the camera looks through this glass at the person who's presenting on camera. Now, as an owner of both of these systems, I can tell you the pros and cons of them. Pros, that this is very lightweight. Um, basically, what you do is attach it onto your lens using step-up rings, and it basically sits on the lens just like this. You can see like that. And what you do is you take your phone, this is a phone sized one, you take your phone, put it in this slot like this, and hopefully, uh, if it's pointing the right way, you will see a teleprompter like this. And if it's covered with a lens, this is what you would read off. Um, negatives about this one is, although the manufacturer Parrot do give you a nice handy Bluetooth remote, and it also has an app which works with this remote. It's very difficult to change the script while you're on this, and also customizing the script is very difficult. If you need to do that, you basically need to touch the camera and maybe even remove the phone from the teleprompter to make changes. It's not a very good system, and if your camera placement or movement is very, very exact, this is really not a good solution for that because you're gonna find, you're gonna have to keep making adjustments to the script and also speed and everything, you know, you can use the remote, but it's just not great. They have kind of the speed preset. So it's not very customizable. It's not very good to work with. And basically what you're typing on is if I go back into the edit mode of this, if I go to edit script, you're typing on this tiny, tiny screen and you can't really see how the formatting is affecting the script as it is displayed on the teleprompter. So while these can work for very, very basic scripts. I can't really recommend this for anything where you're going to need to do a lot of scripts or even make changes to scripts in a very fast manner or any production where your camera placement and positioning cannot change because it's inevitable by attaching and detaching the phone to the teleprompter itself, the camera is going to move. So not a very good system. I can't really recommend this too much. The next level up, this is um, one, I believe it's from Glide Gear. And I've had this for quite a matter of years, so I have made s some adjustments to it as if I've taken things off it. Um, basically, this is built for iPad, so the iPad would sit somewhere like this. And if I flipped it over, yeah, yeah. The screen is bigger, so which is good if you are further away from the camera or if you're hard of sight or if you can't see very far, um, this is a better solution. And this works pretty well, okay? so. For anything like Blackmagic cameras or Sony cameras or small DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, this is going to work very well. Um, it's kind of the right size for that. However, if you are stepping up that size to something like an FX6, which is what I have right here, um, this is where the kind of, either, it's either the limit or this is just not going to work, uh, where this camera height, the lens height, compared to where the mirror is, is just not going to work out. So I would say this is good for like mid-size productions, but Anything above that, you're going to be looking into more expensive options or more kind of dedicated, built professional options rather than this $200 teleprompter. The other thing with this Glide Gear is it doesn't come with any kind of app. So you have to work out how to get your script on the iPad to display to the presenter. And luckily in this video, I'm going to be covering exactly that um, with a really cool free service. Uh, called Fluid Prompter. So we've been using Fluid Prompter for quite a few years because it is 
for us, the best free solution to displaying scripts on teleprompters. And the fact that it's free is just for all the features that you're getting is truly amazing. Now for the type of content that we make for ourselves and for other people, we are usually using that Glide Gear teleprompter and something like an iPad to display that script to the person. And how we do that is we feed the script from Fluid Prompter into the iPad. And the other way that we like to use this kind of teleprompter system is to display also a kind of um, confidence monitor to the person who's on screen. So a way of showing the camera feed back to the person so they can check if their clothes look good, if their posture is correct, if they like the way they look before they go on and read the script. So the setup I'm gonna describe is a little bit complicated, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you do need some parts, which are definitely not free, but we rely on Fluid Prompter to actually do the scripting part. So I'll quickly cover how we feed that signal into the iPad. So the first piece of gear that we use is a Axun Simo. We have the HD version and a 4K version here. Um, they, are, they pretty much do the same thing. And the only difference is really that you're gonna find is this is gonna support 4K and this one's not going to in this regard. Um, I believe this is only 20 or $30 more expensive than this one. So because this one is better, I would go for this one. Um, if you already have one of these, that's great because you can do this setup very, very easily. How this works is you feed an HDMI cable into this, you power the CMO with a Sony MPF battery and you feed via USB-C or if it's an older iPad, a lightning connection Apple cable and you feed it into the iPad or your iPhone. So we're gonna be using the 4K version of the CMO for this demonstration and for power source, I'm gonna be using the port keys BD1 and make sure that you're using the eight volt side, which is the side with the yellow um, connector part here because this will stop the power going over eight volts and this CMO can only take 8.4 volts. Um, so make sure that you're using the correct side so you don't blow it up. And then we can connect our USB-C because we're gonna connect it to the iPad and make sure that you connect your HDMI cable in here. And this can be any source that you want, which is really cool about the CMO. You can connect any HDMI source and display it on your iPad. So turned it on, I'm waiting for it to recognize the signal. There we go. So this is the camera screen on here. So this is a way of displaying like a confidence monitor to the person who's speaking on camera. And what you would do, if I bring up the teleprompter again, put that in here like that, and there you go. So you could look at yourself on the screen while looking at yourself, <laughs> This is really cool. And you have all these really nice features in the CMO app, like you can do false color and things like that. So if you're doing like lighting adjustments, it's very useful. So we can turn it off there. So now we've got that going. So basically we're we using an ATEM Mini Extreme ISO um, to control our inputs and outputs. You could also just connect directly to the CMO. However, if you wanna do the swapping between the camera and the script, you're gonna to need to connect via a switcher of some kind. So if I connect now the laptop or MacBook here to the ATEM, I can then swap over and display Fluid Prompter. So now we've got the laptop display signal going into our iPad via the CMO. And this is how basically we would do it. We would be putting our script in here and you have options to flip the script inside of um, the browser here. So I can flip it like that. So it's the right way round. But now you'll notice that on the laptop, it is also flipped. So that's not that useful. But this is where the CMO comes in handy because on the CMO, we have a option is it has this flip control here. So I can flip it here and now it is facing the right way all the time, which is really good for us. And why Fluid Prompter is so good is because you can just easily make changes to the script, like, hello, this is a script for a video. So you can make easy changes to scripts on the fly and then go back into display mode. And it's very easy to control by just scrolling your fingers up and down on the page. And these are just the default instructions, but it's very easy just to copy and paste a full script from Google Docs or whatever into here and then get to presenting straight away. However, if you don't need this confidence monitor setup, you could get rid of the ATEM and the CMO 
because Fluoroprompter has a really interesting trick up its sleeve. And that is that it's completely browser based and you can share your teleprompter to someone else or another device just by using a browser. Let me show you how that works. Before we continue, I recommend that you make at least a free account on fluidprompter.com uh, because it will get rid of any word limits or restrictions that you might have at this point. Uh, so make your free account, log in, and then start working on a script. And then what you need to do is go to the top right-hand corner of the script and click Share Prompter. And it's gonna show you two QR codes and you can either pick a remote or you can pick a viewer. And what we want is a viewer. Then share that link onto your iPad or another device, and you're gonna have the same teleprompter displayed in this browser here. So if I just skip the tour as we know what we're doing, the cool thing is, is I now have it on my iPhone as well. If I put my iPhone here, if I press play, and then I speed, oh, if I press play and I speed up thing, you can now see that the iPad and the iPhone are displaying the teleprompter in real time from what I'm controlling it with on the MacBook. And this is something you can't do with that Power app. And I haven't seen this on any other system, which is free. I mean, this is insane. So if you have a larger team and you need to maybe have someone offsite or someone just on the laptop sat next to your, your set, they can control a teleprompter while you are doing other things, which is really amazing. And it's just, this is like the best feature of this. Like literally, it's so amazing. Other cool things about this system though, is that you can change the display of the, like the prompter appearance on each device individually. So as if you need the teleprompter to be larger on the iPad, for example, for someone who's reading it, and we want it in the center, we want to get rid of the, like the tabs on the side, and we want to flip it, for example, horizontally like that. And then we can put it into our teleprompter. And then when we control it, they all play at the same time. Like this is amazing, right? For something that's free, insane value. So other cool things I like about Fluid Prompter is at the bottom of the screen, uh, bottom left-hand side, you get some timers and that, that, that will tell you at the speed that you're scrolling at, how long you have left of the script either by section or like the full script in its entire. If you want to quickly copy and paste a script into this Fluid Prompter, you can see roughly how long it would take you to read that script out, um, which is a super useful feature. Now, the way that we normally control the teleprompter is we just use Google Chrome in the browser and we're just sliding our fingers up and down like this to control the speed. This can get very tiresome if you're doing like eight hour, 10 hour days of this, especially when you don't want any mistakes and you can make mistakes by either just like scrolling too fast or too slow. So there are some features that are in the pro version of Fluid Prompter. So if you're in a serious business or studio business where you use teleprompters all the time, the pro uh, plan is probably for you because it will allow you to use Bluetooth controls to aid in the control of the teleprompter. I have been sent a few different types of controller here from um, from Fluid Prompter themselves, and I'm gonna introduce them to you one by one. First up, we have um, this normal air turn uh, digit three, which is like a normal clicky hand controller. Like these, you get these all the time, nothing too special about this one. Um, what you would do is if you go onto your side menu and you collect, connect devices, you will have options to connect a different controller. So with this one, uh, Air turn digit three remote. So we click on there and I need to turn it on by holding down the remote button here. Hold it on for a few seconds until it turns on. And then we get the option to pair it on the screen. So I'll click pair. And now it says it's been connected. So now I can just press the buttons and skip around sections. <laughs> and you know, I'm sure if anyone's used a teleprompter or anything before, you know how these work. So I'll press up to go back up to the next set, last section, press down to skip, that kind of things. Left and right changes the speed, as we just said. So, you know, this is very standard, very normal. This is a cool one, um, which I also need to connect. So I'll, I'll just hold on the power and go back up to my side menu up here, add another device. Uh, I think this is the AirTurn Duo foot pedal. Scanning for devices again. Okay, there we go. It Duo on the screen, click there, and now it's connected. Now with this one, you get like skip 
prompts or skip controls even. So this won't change the speed of anything, but it will allow you to skip back and forth. With these two, you kind of need to use them at the same time. So, you know, press play and then you can skip if you need to. Um, but the best controller, I think the best controller that they have is this thing, uh, which is quite a beast. I believe this is like a guitar pedal or something like that. And you have another kind of Bluetooth device at the top here, uh, which I believe is another product, but kind of miniaturized in some way. And if we add another device, which if you notice how many devices we're adding here, which is really cool. Okay, and this one comes at, up as the BT500S-6. So we pair that as well. And this is the cool thing. Okay, so what we can do, instead of using this hand controller, we can then just push down like a car accelerator. Um, let me put that out in front like that. You can push it down and then it's gonna speed up and slow down. Okay, so, and then, okay, you might need to use the controller just to back back up, or you could use the, or you could use this clicky pedal, right? So what you can do is then speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. You can see that speed controller bar at the bottom like there. Um, so this is really in ingenuitive. I really like this controller because you have two options. Either you give this to the person who's on screen so they can control themselves and slowly ease at the speed that they need. It's just like kind of talking to someone while you're driving. You don't really have to think about it too much. Or you can control it yourself if you're the person who's controlling the script for someone else. I can tell you that this is way easier than trying to, you know, scroll up and down with your hands. So um, very, very kind of instinctive. You don't really have to think about it. Like this is very natural. I'm thinking for anyone who has driven a car before, you don't have to think about what you're doing. It's very easy to control. So I really like this system. I think out of the three controllers, obviously this is the clicky ones kind of, uh, I mean, this clicky pedal is kind of cool to skip easily back and forth and stuff like that. Um, it's not that clicky actually, it's quite quiet. But um, you know, this, the speed with this kind of throttle pedal is really, really good. But these obviously are not free. Uh, if you want to buy these kind of remotes, you need to click on the page under connected devices. When you go to connect another device, um, you have an option at the bottom that says buy a remote and that will take you to the Fluid Prompter website where you can find some of these remotes. I believe this is a prototype right now. Um, so it's not listed on the website, but um, I think you should email the Fluid Prompter team and bug them to get this quick, out quickly because this is like a game changer um, for <laughs> teleprompters. Like this is really, really good. Such a great product. So yeah, if you're interested in Fluid Prompter or um, these remotes, please go to fluidprompter.com. Um, there's no affiliate links or anything. I don't gain anything if you sign up or if you don't sign up. However, even if you just use the free account, um, when you sign up, if it says, the option to who recommended you, just type in another camera channel in the other section because uh, I'm sure the owners would love to hear that you've come through this video to Fluid Prompter. And you know, it's free, you've got nothing to lose. And it's definitely, in my opinion, the best uh, like teleprompter app out there for all these features and it's free and been paying a small monthly fee, you get to use these cool controllers. Like if you do this a lot, it's gonna save you so much time and so much stress. So go sign up at fluidprompter.com. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button down below and leave a comment about what you think about Fluid Prompter. As always, subscribe for more content just like this and we'll see you in the next one.